Hi guys, Brain Assist here, uh, coming to you with something a little bit different today, my very own control and movement guide. Alright, so I know there's a lot of movement guides out there, but I'm tired of seeing you know YouTube comments, Reddit comments, saying, you know, cries in controller, or, oh, I wish I could do that on controller, I uh, wish I could tap strafe on controller. I just want to make this video to clear up that at this stage, controller players can do everything that mouse and keyboard players can do near enough okay so the video is basically going to be in four parts there's going to be a brief bit about settings um, a part about creating momentum from nothing um, a part about sustaining momentum while altering direction and the fourth and final part will be about armor swapping and moving while looting Okay, so settings. Um, I'm not going to get too much into this. You want your FOV above 90. If you're not over 90, you're trolling. Everything else you just want optimized to give you the best frames that you can get. It's going to depend on your system. Um, I have everything set to pretty low. But I'm on 1080p. You might need to be on less than 1080p if your system's not that good. Um, now, this is the important bit. Controller uh, settings. Crouch set to hold. It's going to make B hopping easier. Survival slot button is off, so you can spam your kunai, you know, you know the vibes. Um, menu cursor speed, this is a really important one. Um, you want this set pretty high, as high as you can tolerate really, um, so that you can move around your cursor in death boxes faster. Um, so you can get your armor swap. So. All my settings are in advanced look controls. These are basically Gen Burden's settings. So we have max sensitivity. Um, it's really important for uh, being able to turn fast and adapt to the really fast movement in this game. Oh, yep, yep, yep. oh my god! I um, it's also going to make your like tap strafes and you know momentum shifts, whatever. It's going to make those so much easier zipline strafing everything is easier when you're on max sense when you get used to it another part of having snappy controlled camera movement is playing on zero response curve or as people call it linear um, in low dead zone is going to make your stick movement more true to what your cursor movement is doing uh, if it's too low your stick will just drift around all over the place so you're gonna have to play around with that I have it at around six percent some people don't mind it less some people will need it to be a little bit more. I, I would say if you need it more, you probably need a new controller or you need to clean your controller. Outer threshold, you just set that to as low as you can. It's 1% for me. Everything else, zero, ADS speed. That can be a lot lower because if your sense is too high, you're going to lose your aim assist um, when you ADS. And obviously you want target compensation. That's your aim assist, you want that on. Melee target compensation, obviously you want that on. Okay, so gameplay settings. I'm just going to gloss over this. I don't want to go into too much detail. I'm just going to cover the important bits. So weapon, auto, cyclone, empty. Uh, in my opinion, you want that off. Um, you want to have control over whether you're reloading or whether you're putting your gun away and getting the other one out. Auto sprint, you definitely want that on. This is an important one. Um, it gives you more control. You, you know, you can have another button with your left stick press in, through your Steam config. Um, I'll get into that later. Um, this is an area where you actually have a slight advantage over mouse and keyboard players because they're either walking or they're sprinting, um, whereas you can go anywhere in between with joystick movement. The rest of it, double tap sprint, no, you just want that off. Taking damage closes death box or crafting menu, you really want that off because otherwise you're not going to be able to armor swap when people are shooting. Everything else pretty unimportant. I like colorblind mode to change my reticle color. So it's yellow, I have on Tridenopia. Your mileage may vary, some people like that, some people don't. Um, everything else really doesn't matter. Okay, so one of the coolest, flashiest ways of uh, creating momentum is the super glide. You can super glide forwards, you can super glide to the side, and you can even super glide backwards. There's multiple ways, as usual, with anything, uh, but the main way that I use it in my gameplay, and that most people I would say tend to use it, is for 
closing a gap or moving across an open space. Okay, so how do you do it? You want to approach an object that you can mantle, walk into it, press jump to mantle up, and then right when you see a little dip in the corner of your screen, you want to press jump and crouch at the exact same time. The timing of this is pretty tricky. Um, you have a one to three frame window which makes this a lot easier to do on lower frames per second. But you want to be playing on high frames per second for the most part because it's going to make the rest of your gameplay easier in terms of tracking, flicking, just generally knowing what's going on in your screen. So there is a way that you can have low FPS momentarily without the drawbacks of constantly playing on it. So the way you do this is through your Steam config, your launch options for Steam. I'm going to link a video in the description on exactly how you do that because it's pretty time consuming to explain it. Um, but it's pretty simple to set up and you guys shouldn't have any trouble doing that on your own. So one last little quick tip for checking if you're doing the super glide correctly is if you change it into third person mode in the firing range, when you do the super glide your character's legs will straighten out. If it's not a super glide, they'll be bent. And your velocity should go somewhere over 400 when you do it correctly. So the only other advanced method for creating momentum in this game is what Moki Sniper dubbed the quick slide. So here's Moki himself explaining how to do this. Hold crouch, start sprinting, uncrouch, and slide jump. This is a less flashy, less difficult technique than the super glide, but in my opinion it's actually more useful. You can use it to get off of a door quickly. When you're in a door blocking situation with an enemy on the other side of the door, you can use it to move from behind a piece of cover quickly and without a gunfire ruining your momentum. Okay, so I'm gonna skip over the basic stuff like uh, slide jumping and uh, B hopping. There's plenty of videos out there on how to do those things already. I'm instead just going to focus on tap strafing and also combining tap strafing with B hopping and with wall jumping. So, how do you tap strafe on controller? Tap strafing on controller is technically not possible. That's why this is only possible on PC. You're going to need to go to your Apex Legends tab on Steam, select controller configuration, and remember how earlier I was hinting at using left stick press for something? Well this is where it comes in. You're going to assign your keyboard inputs A and W to your left stick press. Then you just need to put hold to repeat on and turn the repeat rate all the way up. If you then do the same thing for your right stick press with D and W respectively, then you'll be good to go. You can tap through. Here's how I have my buttons laid out in game to give you some idea of how you can have these inputs assigned without impeding your gameplay in any way. Once you've mastered tap stripping, the possibilities really are endless. <laughs> so 
So once you have your buttons set up and you've loaded into the game, if you just press left stick press, it'll move your character forward and to the left, like this. After that, all you have to do is start combining it with slide jumps or wall jumps by simply pressing left stick press and turning left with your camera or pressing right stick press and turning right with your camera. Okay, so the last part of the video. Control players are notorious for standing still while looting. Unfortunately, due to the way that the input is set up in-game, we are unable to strafe while looting a death box, but there are a number of workarounds and I'm gonna just touch on what I consider to be the most important ones. Hopefully between this and playing on a bit of a higher sense, control players can stop looking like this and like this and instead start looking like this. So to do this running, jumping arm of swap, you need to simply run towards the death box, hold square when the prompt becomes available, and then as the box is opening, press jump, and you'll begin a jump animation as the menu comes open. Sometimes you need to spend a little bit of time in there, you know, pick up some meds, pick up some ammo, uh, get some different things. That's where this next method comes in. You're going to need a foot pedal, such as the one on screen. Then you need to program your foot pedal so that left is left and a crouch input, and so that your right foot pedal is right and a crouch input. Once you've set this up, it'll look like this. Alright, my fellow PC controller bros, I hope you've enjoyed the video, um, and I hope you no longer feel like can't compete with mouse and keyboard in movement.